these things are amazing. In terms of bang for buckness, cost, complexity, difficulty or ease of use going in to quality of results, I have rarely found any product or concept or technique which can equal the pinhole glasses. And you want a pinhole glasses that covers the entire visual field. So these are these large aviator style pinhole glasses. They're really something special. Um, there are websites on the internet where they sell pinhole glasses in every imaginable style and frame, but definitely get the ones that completely cover the visual field. These are, in my humble opinion, among the best uh, tools that we have available for doing non-dominant hemisphere work and uh, mind expansion and perceptual expansion with an extremely simple old technology. And the way these things work is they have, as you can see, not a glass or plastic lens, but they have a plastic screen with um, small pinholes punched in them. And what these do is they act as both um, a sunglasses in that they reduce the brightness of the light, so they're excellent to wear on bright days. They also reduce the what is called the, the spatial frequency of the light coming in. So the image is definitely somewhat degraded in the sense that you would experience maybe a, the eye of a, a fly or a bee or something like that. It's more of a fractalized vision. And yet because of the pinholes, in some respects, it acts as a corrective lens giving you sharper vision. So there are areas or little zones of vision which are individually sharper, yet the collective uh, visual field has softened quite considerably. And I've noticed several effects, uh, what I believe are the neurological or, or um, processing level effects. One of the effects, of course, is that based on what we have in neuroscience theory of uh, hemispheric dominance, these uh, will, will definitely shift the processing toward the non-dominant hemisphere. And as opposed to using, say, the Schiffer glasses, where these are particularly useful is that they are non-selective. If you are dominant right or dominant left, right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't matter. By creating a lower spatial frequency um, visual experience, that processing visually is going to shift over much more to the, the right hemisphere if the right hemisphere is not dominant or the left hemisphere if the left hemisphere is not dominant um, for visual processing. They present a, a considerable perceptual challenge. So people who wear them say that their vision has become sharper. I believe what has happened is that when you wear them, it acts like a, a, a weight or a resistance to your visual processing, and your visual processing has to work harder. So it's sort of like taking your, your visual cortex and other visual part of your visual apparatus to a gym and making it work much more uh, uh, assiduously to put together a visual experience. So that in itself is, is quite useful. Uh, I, I think these things would be fantastically good in, say, um, couples therapy or family therapy, where people tend to get locked into one mode of thinking and have everybody put these things on, say, go outdoors where there's plenty of light, and then discuss matters wearing them, operating from, say, a non-dominant hemisphere. They may then, the, the, the interactions and relations, uh, say between a couple that's contemplating marriage or a couple that's having some difficulties, might find themselves accessing very uh, lesser used or underused parts of their thinking apparatus along with this. So there is a, an immediate shift is possible. Immediate perceptual to conceptual to effective emotional shift may occur just by using these. 
Another place where these would be exquisitely useful is in trainings, in an NLP training, if these were provided or if people brought their own. Um, and say during the breaks, if people went outside and they walked around and they were wearing these, they could really experience shifting dominance and shifting processing modes in a very direct experiential way. So, so in that, this case, I, I think these almost ought to be part of the standard equipment of uh, NLP or other, other types of perceptual trainings. And the other uh, equally important uh, aspect of wearing these things is that they shift perception from visual perception to auditory perception to a certain extent. I find when I'm wearing these my auditory perception becomes much clearer and much more tuned up as there's less visual data coming in and my brain is compensating by gathering and attending to much more auditory information. So um, you get uh, Hemispheric dominant shifts, you get uh, shifts in auditory versus visual modes. Any of these shifts may be highly significant, especially in relationships of any sort where people get trapped in certain relationship patterns. Uh, shifting from visual to auditory may be very important. Shifting from dominant to non-dominant may be very important. And I think also in, in the last uh, case I can think of, these would be extremely good, almost so good that they should be required for uh, kids and adolescents to practice operating from their, say, uh, non-habitually preferred parts of their mind. Some sorts of, of uh, safe sports, say a soccer, football, light game, maybe with a large, soft uh, ball that is you, you don't move too quickly with, and having some kind of field sport, slow moving field sport with these, would really tune up people's coordinations, really tune up other aspects of their, their field sense, and their coordination of um, non-dominant hemisphere to bodily, physical um, coordination, uh, eye arm, eye leg type coordinations. Incredible, and considering that these things are probably you know fifteen dollars U.S. and if you buy them in bulk, I'm sure much cheaper. Um, the bargain of the century in terms of getting um, uh, preferred uh, preferred sensory modality, preferred hemispheric use, uh, preferred neural channel use um, in a in an extremely compact, light, safe package right there. You, you've, you've got almost like a, a training, you know, a, a whole training right here just in these things. So um, pinhole, pinhole lenses, uh, there are many internet sites that, that sell these things. Look them up, go with that, experiment with them. Um, I'd love to see especially coaching. And when we have some coaching seminars coming up in the summer, I think in August. These would be incredibly valuable to add, add to a, a coaching training and experience coaching with and without uh, pinhole lenses. My one caveat would be um, obviously don't use them while driving, obviously don't use them while operating machinery, obviously don't use them in any place where you need your, your full visual awareness. So, you know, that, that should go without saying, but in many cases uh, people do fairly um, unwise things if they're not careful to, to stop and think about it. So stop and think about it. Use these when you're safely walking around on the sidewalk or you're in a, a slow moving area where you're not going to uh, collide with anybody. Um, you will definitely uh, experience a, a loss of your ability to, to track things to the edge because these holes kind of give you a, a more telescopic kind of frontal perception. So your edge perception definitely fades a little bit with these things. But um, Amazing, amazing tools, amazing, amazing amount of, of work you can do directly with the mind for very little cost, very low risk, uh, very low effort. You, you, I don't think there's anything else available to us as, uh, as profoundly effective as the pinhole lens. So investigate those, I, especially if you're training and you're training where you want a, a lot of perceptual shift, you want a lot of um, understanding of how dominant and non-dominant perception might work. This is your, your deal. There's nothing else around that comes close and especially not for the price.